Adam Harry back again with another Bulls overview. Today I want to take a look at a uh, uh, really fun game system from Fantasy Flight Games. This is a role-playing game system. This is the end of the world system. Uh, I've got two of the books. We put these up actually at Gen Con and I've been kind of sitting on them for a while. Uh, I've been flipping through them. Pretty interesting and uh, I'm pretty excited to actually go through them today. So um, I'm going to start with the zombie one, but a uh, quick overview of the system. Obviously it's called the end of the world. Well, duh Adam, I, I can read. What does that mean? <laughs> Good question. So, these books are set up, and there's a whole series of them. You basically play yourself uh, with the uh, character generation stuff in there. You, you can basically sit down with your buddies, uh, and what happens is, basically the Game Master throws a scenario at you. The end of the world has happened. Uh, in this case, it's zombies, and in this case, it's uh, the Wrath of the Gods, and we'll get into that more here in a second. But I'm going to start with the zombies, for example. So. He throws these uh, uh, throws this zombie zombie apocalypse scenario at you. You know, it's day one. You're at home doing whatever you're doing. Zombie zombie outbreak starts. What do you do? If you're like me, you already have a zombie escape plan. Why do I have that? Ask my wife. Uh, it's a pretty funny story. So, <laughs> but the the cool thing about this is, what type of zombies are we dealing with? Oh, didn't think about that, did you? Are these the fast moving? Uh, uh, 20 Days Later zombies? Are these the slow-moving George Romero zombies? Are these Haitian voodoo zombies? Are these people that have been infected by some kind of weird alien virus zombies? I don't know. All I know is that zombies are happening. Well, how does how do you how do you contract zombieism? Do you just die? Do you just get back up? Are the dead just getting up out of the grave? Do you have to get bit? Do you have to get get their bodily fluid, blood, spit, saliva, whatever, in your blood system? Uh, do, is it is it airborne? Hope not, because that'd be a quick game. But that's kind of what this book takes on, and um, it, it does the same thing for Wrath of the Gods. We'll get to that one too, but uh, um, matter of fact, let's just jump into the zombie book real quick, and I'll flip through and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let's jump on in. A couple of uh, technical points here. Uh, this book, hardback, obviously, full color all the way through. It is 144 pages of, of good times. So I'm going to skip ahead to, uh, that's kind of the end scenario stuff. Let's talk about a specific zombie outbreak. This is kind of how this campaign works. Um, and, and as the DM, these are kind of the core rules here, stress, death, and all that fun stuff, traumas. Um, but what makes it interesting is the DM basically keeps hidden information from the players. Like, what type, what type of zombies are we dealing with here? So this is the uh, uh, post-apocalyptic one as far as uh, no more room in hell. So the dead have started rising up from the from the ground. Uh, you've got true believers, pragmatic survivalists, remnants, and you know it gives you a, a scenario like the abandoned city here, uh, cult compound, refugee compound. But it, it goes through. You've got religious prophets, military leaders, uh, cult bounty hunters. You know this is the pandemic scenario. This is where uh, the outbreak has gone viral, and these are. So the other one was undead zombies that are kind of a supernatural element. This is a this is a uh, apocalypse scenario from 20 days later, if you will. So it's got timelines laid out. The cool thing about this game is it breaks it down for you uh, first by almost by minute, by hour, and then by day. So day two, what's going on? Day three, day five. So like the first week, you've got the first day, you've got the first week, you've got the first month, then you've got first year, two years, three years, a couple months out. So it's kind of cool because it breaks it down for each scenario uh, as as far as like how that all plays out. So this one again, this is the the viral outbreak. You've got the infected, uh, infected prime, stuff like that. So that's what's neat about this one. They even go into, I think the Haitian voodoo zombies one. Um, there's, your, there's another timeline, all the different scenarios. And it breaks down, it's pretty cool. Like what exactly does it mean uh, to have the George Romero zombies. Okay, cool. Let's play that out. Let's play. And the, the fun thing is, is these campaigns, these games are not, you could do them for, you know, pro, prolonged extended campaign. If you really want to do like the walking dead thing just week after week, or you can just play a quick, you know, four part quick campaign. Boom, boom, boom. Get the action out of the way. Do you make it out of the building in one piece? You know, <laughs> do you make it down the street in one piece? Uh, do you find a, a nice place to hide? So, this one is the uh, uh, Alien Night of the Meteor, that one, if you've ever seen those uh, kind of zombie movies. But there's like five or six different scenarios uh, for each game. 
uh, that based on your, and you can, you can play the same character five different times, six different times, but it's a completely new scenario. You still do it with zombies, but what type of zombies are them? And if you want to get really crazy, you can start mixing and matching stuff just to throw the players off even more. So uh, that's pretty fun. I, I think it's a really neat take on a, a zombie game, first off, because most people, you think zombies, you think, okay, whatever. But then you start talking about it and you kind of have to have different plans of attack for what type of zombies we're dealing with. So that's the end of the world zombie book. Let's take a look at the end of the world Wrath of the Gods book real quick. Here we have Wrath of the Gods again, same same vein of game, same end of the world scenarios. Again, what makes this game what makes this game system so fun is that you actually play a, a fictionalized version of yourself, meaning that you have whatever supplies you have on hand. Uh, uh, you can play this game out of your house, you know, as far as like actually playing it in your house. Like we're in the game room playing the game about us playing playing fighting off zombies or, or elder gods in my living room with the game. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I mean, this is, you can really, really play this out like down the street as far as like mentally, it makes it really vivid and really easy to get into character because you're playing yourself. So uh, it's fun. Long story short. Okay, so that's that's what I like about this game. But the elder gods, this one is not just H.P. Lovecraft. This is also uh, Revelation of John. This is, uh, the uh, Mayan uh, in the world scenario with the snake god, Quetzalcoatl coming back. This is Viking Ragnarok, and also, um, I believe, uh, Mother Earth, Gaia, striking back at all the people for being ecologically uh, unsound. So <laughs> there's a lot of different stuff. It's five other scenarios, again, playing as yourself in the end of the world, end time stuff. So uh, it's pretty fun. Again, the game mechanics, pretty simple. It's D6 based. Uh, you're playing with your buddies. That's what I was talking about. Let's play the game in our room about the, the world ending literally down the street. So uh, I forgot to mention this in the other quick part overview. Um, this does talk about determining characteristics, how the tests work. So opposed tests, uh, uh, making a tech, climb check, something like that, whatever. Dice and all that fun stuff. Gear and supplies, how that all works. All that stuff is in the core rules, but what makes these games fun to me is really uh, the running of the game where the, the GM gets to pick which scenario and not really tell it to the player, just lets them figure it out. And then we have the different scenarios. In this case, we have Gaia's Revenge, uh, Return of Quetzalcoatl, the Return, uh, uh, sorry, the, the Ragnarok happens, uh, Revelation from the uh, Biblical End Times, uh, and then that is not dead. So that's another whole other one. So, but uh, that's the H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. So uh, that's what makes it cool. So we, I'm going to go through here. We have the stress, death, and traumas, how it affects players and stuff like that. I'm not going to get into that role plays wise, but again, just as a system, that's the common thread that ties these end of the world books all together. I think it's four books total, but um, anyway, it's pretty neat because again, these can be, you can play these as quick one shot adventures. Uh, if you got a couple hours to kill with some buddies, you just want to do a quick RPG adventure. Hey, let's, let's, let's actually try our zombie escape plan out <laughs> using these rules and see what happens. But these are, you know, uh, there's one biblical end time scenario. There's there's Ragnarok happening. You know, what do you do if the Norse god shows up? Uh, that's a good question. What do we do when the plants come to get us, Mark Wahlberg? I, I don't know. What? No. Um, so there's all that going on there. So Gaia's Revenge. That's this scenario. Uh, we've got the other Wrath of Gods. This is you know, it, it does give you antagonists. Obviously, we've got rioters, my warriors, military forces, Quetzalcoatl. Obviously, uh, you want to take him on. You better bring a lot of shotgun shells. I don't know. <laughs> so we've got all that, uh, but there's a bunch of other stuff. There's the timelines like I talked about, where you've got the first couple of hours, you've got the first couple of days, first week, first month, pretty much. Um, this one's kind of quick because I don't know if you're familiar with the Ragnarok end times, but it's it's pretty quick. There's you know the gods fighting against the great worm, and uh, it's Yormonger, and it's not not does not end well. <laughs> so. That's what that goes down there. So we've got all the different uh, mighty Valhalla warriors there. Revelation, uh, Apocalypse, if you're all familiar with you know, Bible stuff, you may have recognized some of this scenario stuff, but there's the end times. <laughs> War, Armageddon. Uh, I believe there's a timeline in here somewhere, but there's your Force Horsemen, uh, Hellish Horsemen, Locust Swarm, all that fun stuff to deal with. So you get the idea. It's, it's a neat biblical scenario, and then probably one of my favorite End times uh, is, of course, <laughs> gotta have the Cthulhu. Gotta have that one going on, right? So, 
Uh, but that's the HP Lowcraft. Again, these books uh, use the Edge system, which is uh, pretty, pretty popular, I think. Uh, pretty well known. But it's an RPG, the whole End of the World series from FFG. They are a lot of fun to flip through. Even if you just, I actually read one of these on the flight back from Gen Con. So they're, they're fun. They're just fun to flip through. Uh, let you play that scenario out in your mind <laughs> with your friends in, on, on your, in your game room or living room, whatever, on your kitchen table. But then, uh, you know, you got your zombie escape plan. How's it going to work? So you got your uh, Ragnarok End Times game plan. How's that all going to play out? So it's fun. It's a fun system. Go check it out. This has been another quick overview of the uh, uh, End of the World system from Bulls. Quick overview. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Adam Harry from Bulls signing off. Have a good one.